There are tons of great smartphones out there that seem really cool but that you can't actually buy in the US. In fact, the Xiaomi Mi 11 in particular is the only phone out right now with the Snapdragon 888 and it currently isn't on sale outside of China. So that begs the question. How do you get a hold of them? Well, you're going to have to import them from China to get them in the US. Today we thought we'd make a brief guide on this topic with some do's and don'ts as well as some important information that you'll need to be aware of in order to have a smooth China smartphone purchasing experience in the US. Without further ado, let's get to business. Firstly, you'll need to work out whether you actually need to import a smartphone at all. There are models made for China as well as for the US, so make sure there aren't any available ones in the US. And also, if there are import-only devices that you want to get into the country, make sure that there aren't any on sites like Craigslist or eBay because there are companies out there that specialize in importing technology over to the US and then reselling them on sites like eBay. So make sure there aren't any available there first because it could save you a lot of time, hassle and money. You should also be aware that some smartphones won't support certain cell bands for individual carriers and technologies. This means that you might get limited or no LTE coverage depending on which carrier you're on compared to something that's going to be domestic, that's going to have all the bands supported. Be sure to check which bands your carrier uses and cross-reference those with the model that you're buying from abroad. Right, so you figured out that you do want to import a smartphone. Well, now you're going to have to check which retailer you can get that from. We recommend going for one with good reviews. The top ones are Gearbest, Banggood and AliExpress. Getting phones from abroad can take time and it's possible to get scammed out of your money, so make sure that the seller you're purchasing from has some good reviews. Once you've found a listing on the correct site, you want to check the postage policies for that website because there could be hidden shipping fees. With regards to import tax, the US raised the import tax threshold from $200 to $800 in 2016, meaning that if the value of the item that you're importing is under $800, you won't have to pay any import tax. Anything that's worth more than that, you're going to have to account for extra money on top of the value of the item and the shipping fees. There can also be currency conversion fees if you're buying in the Chinese currency from the US currency. Some banks and PayPal will charge something like a 5% fee on top of that as well. Importing a smartphone can take a lot longer than domestic shipping, not only due to the distance, but also due to customs clearance. It can take a week or longer for a product to clear customs, but premium services like DHL and FedEx can make this process faster and smoother with their higher tier shipping services. Overall though, expect between two and four weeks for that product to go from China to your door. Once you have the device, it's likely going to be the Chinese model, that's the whole reason for importing, so you're probably not going to have Google Play services or the Play Store. You can remedy this by sideloading from a computer or also downloading a dodgy APK. There are different ways to do it for each smartphone and some Xiaomi devices, you, you only have to go into the Xiaomi Mi Store and enable it. But what I recommend doing is making sure that you can sort this out before making the purchase, just so that you know that everything can go a little smoother. And the reason for this is because sending a phone back logistically isn't going to be cheap or quick when you consider going from the US to China. This is why, by and large, it's better to just buy something domestic because it's going to have all of the warranty support and software support for that given country since it's designed to be sold in that country. So to recap, buy from a reputable seller, double check carrier bands, look for any hidden fees, account for money on top of the device cost, and make sure that you can install the Play Store if that's something that matters to you. And that about rounds out our China smartphone buying guide for the US. If you've done this a few times before, let us know your experiences in the comments because that can help other people out as well. And also ask any questions that you need to in the video comments. Whilst you're down there, please do hit like and subscribe to never miss a video like this one. I've been Ryan Thomas with Android Authority. And I'll catch you later.